let's start by opening the app designer and create our application the application name it, it will be create new equipment now we need to assign a class to the application but first we need to create it so let's switch to Eclipse and create the class the class name will be ZCL create new equipment we need to add the description and the interface then we need to create the methods of the interface and for that we can use the quick fix now for transferring the information from the app to ACP we need to create a work area let's create a work area wa underscore equipment and assign the type z equipment now we can activate the class let's jump back to the app designer search for the class that was created and assigned to the application then we can save and activate the application now the application is ready to be started so let's drag the main components a shell an app and then a page then we need to give a meaningful title to the page the title page is going to be equipment report form let's activate the application and see the result In the class tab, we are able to see the ABAP code without going to Eclipse. Now that the core elements of the app were created, we need to look into the Finish app and see what we need to develop. So, we have three panels and inside two of them we have a simple form with some input fields. Let's start by creating the first panel and put a simple form inside of it and the respective input fields. As we've seen, let's drag a panel, then the simple form and the respective labels and input fields. We need to drag two labels and two input fields. Let's reorg the fields inside the simple form by pairing one label with an input field and let's activate the application. Now we need to select the label and search for the attribute text and type the text of the label. We also can bind directly to a data element from ABAP and for that we need to insert the tilde, the data element, another tilde and the length of the label that we want to show. Let's activate the app. As you can see the label shows name. Let's jump into the Eclipse and change the data element text to show the direct binding to the app. Let's type a 1 in the end of the label, activate the data element, jump back into the app, activate it again. As you can see, now the label is showing name 1. Let's change it back to name. Now we need to select the second label and change the attribute text to part number. Activate the app. As you can see, the labels are not aligned with the input fields. To correct this, we need to select the simple form, search for the attribute editable, and change it to true. Activate the app, and as you can see, now the labels are aligned with the fields. Let's go on with the app by adding a label and two input fields. Because the fields inside the form need to be in pairs, when we activate the application, the two input fields are misaligned. In order to correct this, we need to insert an horizontal box to work as a container. Let's drag both fields inside the horizontal box and activate the application. As you can see, the fields are still misaligned. In order to correct this, we need to change the property render type to bare 
and fit container to true. If you press on the label on, of the attributes, you can see the help for each one of them. Let's activate the application and as you can see, now the fields are aligned. Let's improve the design by adding a small gap between both fields. For this we need just to change the style class margin to a tiny margin between. To properly identify the objects, let's change the names to something more meaningful. You need to take under consideration that the names are the ones used on the JavaScript. So, on the codes that we are providing you, we are using these names. If you use something different, you will need to change the JavaScript code. In order to help the user, we should identify which field it's for latitude and which one it's for longitude. And for that, we can use the property placeholder. Now we can use a nice feature of the designer that is just press on an object and it will automatically select the object on the tree, as you can see. Let's scroll down and choose the property placeholder and type longitude. Choose the second field, do the same and type longitude. Now we can activate the app and as you can see we have a neat information saying latitude and longitude. Let's also add a text to the header text of the panel and change the simple form name to a meaningful name. Then we can activate the application. And voila, the first panel is complete. Let's change back to the complete application and see what we need to do next. Let's start by dragging the second panel to the tree. Then we can change the panel name to panel dates and change the header text to interval scheduling. Let's activate and see the result. Now let's include the second simple form and we need to also to include two labels and a date picker and a slider. Let's Organize the object inside the tree and activate the application. Now we are able to see these two new objects that are more interactive than the input fields. Now to improve the design, let's select the label and give a meaningful label to the date picker. Let's change the checkup date and do the same for the label of the slider and put service interval and activate the application. As previously, to correct the misalignment we need to change the property editable to true on the simple form. Let's also change the name to simple form date and give meaningful names to the fields inside of it. Afterwards we can activate the application. Now, in order to facilitate the user life, we need to use the event life change of the slider to change the label dynamically. Let's open the code editor and start typing the code. We need to change the label according to the value of the slider. If the value is equal to 1, we need to add 1 and day, but if it's different from one, we need to insert instead days. To change the label, we just need to put the label name dot set text, and inside the brackets, we put the text that we want to display. On the else statement, we are going to do one additional thing. We need to set set interval slash this dot get value slash days. Now let's activate the application and see the behavior when we slide the slider. As we can see the label is changing according to the value where the slider is. 
Let's jump into the completed app and see what we need to do next. Let's start by dragging the third panel and we can change the name to panel documents and change the header text to additional documentation. Now we can activate the application. Now to finalize the visual part of the application, let's use a building block. We need to press with the left button over the panel and choose building blocks. Inside we need to choose PDF upload and just press insert. Let's activate the application and test the building block. Let's start by selecting a PDF and now it's being displayed in the application. We are missing just one thing. We need to have a button to trigger the update of the information in the SAP. So we need to add a bar on and select footer and a bar content and select middle. Let's also put a button inside the bar content and change the text of the button to create equipment. Let's activate the application and see the results. The button needs to be improved. Let's change the type to accept. We also can include an icon to improve the design. Let's activate the application and see the final result. And voila, now the visual part of the application is completely done. On the next chapter, we are going to bind the fields to the ABAP to pass the information and create the necessary checks.